Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Hope you've enjoyed the series so far. Um, we've got one more background video um, and then the next video we're going to start getting into um, some of the ways I like to use Emacs and some practical customizations in use. So today I wanted to talk about um, Elisp and but before that just I want to quickly look here at um, GitHub. Uh, we have links to the GitHub repository for all of uh, the stuff that we're covering and I just wanted to show that um, if you want to get to a specific level Lesson. So we've got um, lesson one, we can go to these branches here and we can see the stuff specific to that lesson or we can go over to master and see the latest revision. Um, I'm going to be updating this uh, later uh, today or before this uh, actually goes up and is posted. Um, I'm not going to track all the videos or all the lessons in the readme file here but that'll be on the blog. Uh, thank you everybody who's been commenting on this and giving me suggestions and uh, you know keep them coming and uh, you know and if um, when we start covering specifics uh, please add yours as well since I hope that um, um, you know my students my future students gain value out of this and for those of you that are comfortable Emacs users uh, you do things differently than the way I do them uh, please share uh, it can only help the community so um, what I wanted to talk about is this thing called Elisp so I'm just gonna go into Emacs here and um, Emacs, I don't like looking at Emacs really as an editor. Um, it's really making the font bigger again, make the window bigger, make the font just one bigger, okay. Um, I like looking at it as um, it's really this programming environment that happens to have an editor around it. Now those of you that uh, have been following the uh, learn to code movement and everything else where you have these environments where you can just type in code and it does stuff and uh, people learning to code see instant interactions and instant changes. Um, Emacs is actually kind of like that. When you're using Emacs, when I actually type these keys, I'm actually writing or running an ELISP program. Um, and that configuration file that we'll look at beforehand that we'll be looking at again um, is just an ELISP program. So um, what a, an ELISP program is, it's made up of, of functions and functions do things. And some of you might be familiar, like if you all know that we can add two numbers together, you know, two plus three and we know that we are supposed to do two plus three. But those of you that know a little bit of programming know that you can also write these things as a function. So you could write the plus function on, let's say on two and three. And um, if we had a programming language that had the plus function into it, it might add two plus three and give us five. Or symbolically, we could write the plus function on two and three and that would give us five. Um, and the way Elisp works is everything just goes in the parentheses and this says run the plus function on two and three. Um, and in fact, there's a function that will run this. It's called eval last s expression and s expression is an Elisp form. So I'm going to do that um, eval, whoops, let's go escape x, eval last s expression. And you'll see on the bottom, the font's a little small, that's five. Or if this was 20, eval last s expression, 25. And so everything that we see in parentheses is just a function. And what we're saying is this is the name of the function. So do this function on all the things that we've got over here. Uh, and that's all it is. And um, let me show you a little bit more about, uh, so I just did the eval last function. And, um, Maybe I want to get some help on that function. So let me talk a little bit about the help system. So I know for help, I can do control H F for describe function of our last S expression. And it brings up this stuff over here. Make this bigger. And so notice it's bound to control X, control E. So if I actually want, I can quit that. If I want to run um, that ELISP function, the last S expression, control X, control E, and we'll see on the bottom 25. Or another ELISP function, um, set Q V to be hello, well, to be 20 or 100. Control X, Control E, and then I say plus V V, Control X, Control E, 100 plus 100 is 200. Um, and we can do all sorts of other things. And when I said that you're actually, when you're typing, you're running a program, there's another really useful help function, control H K for describe key. And I can type a key and it gives me the command that it runs. So 
if I type J, notice J runs self-insert command. It's actually running an ELIST function. Or control H K, oops, hit the wrong key. Control H K, let's say control P for previous. Um, and that runs the function previous line. So we can actually do this this way. Previous line, whoops, line. And if we do control X E to run it, it actually goes to the previous line. Or previous five lines, control X E, five lines. So really everything we're doing is just a little program, which, which I think is really, really cool and it's a really interesting way of, um, of working with Emacs. And we can actually, there's another command I want to show you that I don't use much. It's called escape at view lossage. And it actually shows you the history of your command, so it's kind of your program in reverse. So that's what all this ELISP is, and that's a little bit about the help system. We're going to close out today with just one little configuration change. So let's load our .emacs file, uh, or rather our init.l. And I'm going to put this after this inhibit startup message. And what we'll do here is we'll add um, another function, toolbar mode, negative 1. And I'm going to save this. And I don't want to save and reload Emacs, so I'm just going to execute this S expression, control X, control E. And notice that that little toolbar went away just to give us a little bit more room. All right, so um, that's it for this episode. Next one, we're going to talk about uh, buffers and how I like to use buffers, um, then Windows, and then off to the races. Okay, so I um, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. And I hope you start thinking about Emacs as not an editor, but this, this weird programming environment that you can do editing in. And uh, please leave your comments and your suggestions um, on the video, on the blog. Um, and that's it, and hope to see you again next time.